In this video, I want to explain just what the problem is with making measurements according to quantum theory. Quantum mechanics tells us that matter is not made of particles. It is made of elementary constituents that are often called particles, but are really described by wave functions. A wave function is a mathematical object which is neither a particle nor a wave, but it can have properties of both. The curious thing about the wave function is that it does not itself correspond to something which we can observe. Instead, it is only a tool by help of which we calculate what we do observe. To make such a calculation, quantum theory uses the following postulates. First, as long as you do not measure the wave function, it changes according to the Schrödinger equation. The Schrödinger equation is different for different particles but its most important properties are independent of the particle. One of the important properties of the Schrödinger equation is that it guarantees that the probabilities computed from the wave function will always add up to 1, as they should. Another important property is that the change in time, which one gets from the Schrödinger equation, is reversible. But for our purposes, the most important property of the Schrödinger equation is that it is linear. This means if you have two solutions to this equation, then only some of the two solutions with arbitrary prefactors will also be a solution. The second postulate of quantum mechanics tells you how you calculate from the wave function what is the probability of getting a specific measurement outcome. This is called the Born rule, named after Max Born, who came up with it. The Born rule says that the probability of a measurement is the absolute square of that part of the wave function which describes a certain measurement outcome. To do this calculation, you also need to know how to describe what you are observing, say, the momentum of a particle. For this, you need further postulates, but these do not need to concern us today. And third, there is the measurement postulate, sometimes called the update or collapse of the wave function. This postulate says that after you have made a measurement, the probability of what you have measured suddenly changes to 1. This, I have to emphasize, is a necessary requirement to describe what we observe. I cannot stress this enough because a lot of physicists seem to find it hard to understand. If you do not update the wave function after measurement, then the wave function does not describe what we observe. We do not ever observe a particle that is 50% measured. The problem with the quantum measurement is now that the update of the wave function is incompatible with the Schrödinger equation. The Schrödinger equation, as I already said, is linear. That means if you have two different states of a system, both of which are allowed according to the Schrödinger equation, then the sum of the two states is also an allowed solution. The best known example of this is Schrödinger's cat, which is a state that is a sum of both dead and alive. Such a sum is what physicists call a superposition. We do, however, only observe cats that are either dead or alive. This is why we need the measurement postulate. Without it, quantum mechanics would not be compatible with observation. The measurement problem is not solved by decoherence, even though many physicists seem to believe this to be so. Decoherence is a process that happens if a quantum superposition interacts with its environment. The environment may simply be air or even in vacuum, you still have the radiation of the cosmic microwave background. There is always some environment. This interaction with the environment eventually destroys the ability of quantum states to display typical quantum behavior, like the ability of particles to create interference patterns. The larger the object, the more quickly its quantum behavior gets destroyed. Decoherence tells you that if you average over the states of the environment, because you do not know exactly what they do, then you no longer have a quantum superposition. Instead, you have a distribution of probabilities. This is what physicists call a mixed state. This does not solve the measurement problem, because after measurement, you still have to update the probability of what you have observed to 100%. Decoherence does not tell you to do that. Why is the measurement postulate problematic? 
The trouble with the measurement postulate is that the behavior of a large thing, like a detector, should follow from the behavior of the small things that it is made up of. But this is not the case, so that's the issue. The measurement postulate is incompatible with reductionism. It makes it necessary that the formulation of quantum mechanics explicitly refers to macroscopic objects like detectors, when really what these large things are doing should follow from the theory. A lot of people seem to think that you can solve this problem by way of reinterpreting the wave function, as merely encoding the knowledge that an observer has about the state of the system. This is what is called a Copenhagen or Neo-Copenhagen interpretation. And let me warn you that this is not the same as a Psi-epistemic interpretation, in case you have heard that word. Now, if you believe that the wave function merely describes the knowledge an observer has, then you may say, of course, it needs to be updated if the observer makes a measurement. Yes, that's very reasonable. But of course, this also refers to macroscopic concepts like observers and their knowledge. And if you want to use such concepts in the postulates of your theory, you are implicitly assuming that the behavior of observers or detectors is incompatible with the behavior of the particles that make up the observers or detectors. This requires that you explain when and how this distinction is to be made, and none of the existing Neo-Copenhagen approaches explain this. I already told you in an earlier video why the many worlds interpretation does not solve the measurement problem. To briefly summarize it, it's because the many worlds interpretation also has to use a postulate about what a detector does. So what does it take to actually solve the measurement problem? We will talk about this some other time, so stay tuned.